Hey everybody. So last week we talked about Pentecost, um, which this Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Um, we talked about the, the miracle of uh, the fire and people speaking in tongues so that folks gathered in Jerusalem at that time could hear God's word in their own languages clearly uh, and then they could take it back home with them and help spread uh, the truth about Jesus. So this week we're continuing it, uh, but we're going to look a little bit later in some of Paul's letters um, to see how this is applied and how he applies it to, uh, to other churches and to the apostles. So we're going to start with 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 11. It says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge. By means of the same Spirit to another faith. By the same Spirit to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. To another distinguishing between spirits. To another speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. So Paul in here describes a lot of different types of spiritual gifts. Um, you know, there are some people um, prophesied, some people spoke in tongues, others could interpret it. So there are a lot of different things going on, but all of them, regardless of the shape of the gift, came from God. And that's what he's reminding them. The one gift is not superior to the others. Uh, they're all from God for a purpose. Like it says in verse 7, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So it's to lift others up. To help the body of Christ. So maybe you guys can, in your own time, describe in your own words what some spiritual gifts might be. Um, talk about what maybe you've witnessed in others or what you think you've seen in yourself. Um, it's important that we explore these things so that we can find out what our gifts are and how we're supposed to use them. Uh, all of us are gifted in some way or another. And like I've said before, no one gift is better more important than the others. Um, some may be more out in front uh, than others, like pastors and, and worship leaders, uh, but just as important are, are the folks that are not out on the stage and, you know, folks that are not out in front of everybody doing things. Um, everything, all of it is important. We're going to flip back to Matthew. Way deep into Matthew, almost to the end, chapter 26. Sixty-nine to seventy-five. So this is a little bit extra. Uh, I want you to listen to these verses and think about this question. So how does this passage that I'm about to read help us to understand the miracle that happened in Peter's heart on Pentecost? Remember that, uh, that Peter was there with the 120 uh, in the room and the Spirit came upon them and they were all speaking in tongues. They were all doing that together. But when... People in the crowd were doubting them and doubting the authenticity of what they were doing, basically telling them they were drunk. Uh, it was Peter that uh, spoke up, and he spoke strongly, and uh, he spoke well uh, in, in defense of what was going on and explaining how this was of God. So having that in your mind, just listen to the passage and think and see if it helps you understand the miracle that happened in Peter's heart on Pentecost. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. 
You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. So this, of course, is just after Peter's, just after Jesus has been arrested and brought to the Sanhedrin, and, and Peter's kind of following in the shadows, and he's watching what's going on, and he's scared. Uh, you know, he's he's confused. Uh, he just doesn't seem, still doesn't seem to grasp uh, what Jesus' mission is and why he has to go through this. Um, he's acknowledged to Jesus that he's the Messiah. He told him so. Um, and he's seen the miracles. He's listened to Jesus teach. Um, but it's just hard to grasp why a Messiah who was supposed to deliver them from oppression and 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 slavery bondage all this stuff the messiah is supposed to deliver them and they just can't quite sort out what that's supposed to look like and some are still expecting this this triumphant king to come and and get rid of the romans and and rule so there's a lot of confusion and peter's not spared uh, so he's he's frightened I mean, he his master who he's been following and 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 learning from is being brought in and put on trial and his life is threatened. So he's frightened and he doesn't want to share the same fate. So he start, he denies him, right? He says, I don't know that guy. It's in the interest of self-preservation, he's, he's fleeing. <clears throat> Yet when it comes time for Pentecost, right? So now this is 50 days after Passover and Passover is when Jesus was crucified. So this is 50 days later, Peter has denied Jesus, Jesus has been led to the cross, suffered, died, buried and resurrected, appeared to them, and then ascended. This is after all of that. So after his denial three times, yet he's convicted, and now... Peter is the one, after the gift, the tongues of fire and, and people speaking in tongues and everyone was amazed, it's Peter who steps out in strong faith and in defense of Jesus and the teachings. So this is a pretty, uh, pretty significant turning around uh, for Peter. And remember the verse, the memory verse, Romans. 15, 13. It's a short one. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So you think Peter is living this verse out? He's out there in front of these people. He just saw Jesus get executed, so there's still... A threat to them they've been hiding and now when everybody's gathered in Jerusalem he's gonna step out filled with hope strengthened by Jesus to share the word to speak clearly to all these people so that the gospel can travel so I think he's I think he is <clears throat> in what ways do you guys feel like you're living out Romans fifteen thirteen. Are you allowing the Spirit, are you allowing Jesus to be your hope? Uh, especially now, you know, there's a lot going on. Uh, these are times that, you know, uh, make a lot of people doubt and question, and there's a lot of hurt, um, you know, whether it's the virus or, you know, now there's, there's violence, there's rioting, uh, 
you know, people are hurting. This is a hurting world. Uh, it's already, from the beginning, been a broken and hurting world. But now it just seems like it's just amplified. Somebody just cranked the volume up on that. Uh, and it's just in all our faces. It's all over social media. It's all over the news. It's all we can talk about because it's it's awful. It's tragic. People are hurting. People are, are, are lashing out and finding ways to reach a solution to problems that they're just not a good, easy answer to. Um, you talk to five different people, ask, ask five different people about it, and they're going to give you five different opinions. Uh, it's none of this is easy stuff because it has to do with how we relate to one another and you're talking about a lot of people coming from a lot of different places with their own different experiences just like is gathered for Pentecost in Jerusalem so you got all these different people coming from different places they have different things that are parts of their lives whether it's their work their family life their experiences traumas uh, you know, good and bad stuff in their lives that shapes who they are and that shapes how they perceive things. Um, there's a simplification in the Pentecost story of that diversity, speaking to their languages, um, but it goes much farther than that. All of us are different. We come from all walks of life. We have different concerns. We different things make us happy, make us sad, make us frustrated. We have different goals. Uh, but every one of us, just like the Jews gather in Pentecost, if we are, listen, we can hear the voice of Jesus speaking to us where we are in our own language so that we have the hope that he brings to all of us. So consider that have hope even in the midst of all this destruction. Um, know that Jesus is King, Jesus is Lord forever. Nothing that humans do will ever change that. So just be strengthened in that. And, uh, you know, I really hope that we can come together again soon in person uh, so we can start having dialogue again, start learning together, exploring all this stuff together because I really miss that. Uh, I even miss Bible bingo, you know, silly stuff. So, um, anyway, you guys take care, pray for one another, uh, and think about ways that you're living out Romans fifteen thirteen. How are you having that hope and being that hope for other people?